Last up is uh, Stephen Redding uh, regarding spatial mobility theory and evidence using Japanese smartphone data. Stephen? Excellent. Thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much again for the opportunity to present in the session. I think it's just sort of fascinating to see all these different rich ways in which we can now use geolocation data to answer new research questions and shed new light on important economic issues. And the paper I'm going to present today is on the economics of spatial mobility theory and evidence using smartphone data. So highlighting how GPS information in smartphones can shed new light on uh, patterns of spatial mobility within cities. And this is a joint paper with Yuhei Miyauchi at Boston University in Kentaro Nakajima um, at Hisotsubashi University. So we're trying to emphasize just how smartphone data have this potential to really revolutionize our understanding of spatial mobility within the economy. In particular, because we can track mobility with a very high degree of spatial and temporal resolution. So for the first time, we can observe millions of observations of people moving around urban areas at different points of the day. And one of the things that we particularly focus on in our paper is to try to highlight how travel itineraries, or what we call trip chains, are a key feature of this spatial mobility. So what do I mean by that? I mean a journey that starts out at home and ends at home and includes two other locations along the route. And so an example might be I travel from home to work in the morning and then I go and meet a friend for dinner somewhere else within the city uh, after work and then after dinner I return uh, back home. And so why do those sort of trip chains or travel itineraries matter? Well, they matter uh, substantially uh, for the organization of economic activity within cities because uh, they create what economists would, would refer to as consumption externalities. So in other words, if I make one location more attractive because I say open a subway uh, stop there, uh, that's going to increase the attractiveness of other locations nearby because if someone is traveling via that subway stop it may be convenient for them to go to a restaurant or a coffee shop or a bar uh, nearby that subway stop and so these these sort of consumption externalities are important for thinking about how place-based interventions uh, namely transport infrastructure investments would be one sort of classic example of that are going to affect urban areas because of these wider consumption externalities they create to either locations that are nearby or other locations that are along the way, somewhere else along the way uh, to that new attraction. Um, and then we provide a, an example of a couple of different um, applications of those consumption externalities in the paper, including in particular the collapse in the demand for non-traded services um, in downtown areas of cities with the shift to working from home in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. So just a little bit about uh, our data. We actually use uh, GPS data from Japan uh, we think this is an attractive setting because, in particular, um, the, our data come from a, a very popular mapping application in Japan. It's one of the main local mapping applications. And a distinct advantage of them relative to a lot of other smartphone data is usually um, the smartphone will only track your location if you're running a particular app uh, that where you agreed to share your GPS services. Whereas uh, for us, any user that sort of downloads that app from the very beginning, they have have to agree to give the location information and we'll see that location information not only when the map when the app is running but whenever the phone is switched on so every five minutes whenever the phone is switched on we know the location uh, for anybody who ever has downloaded that that mapping application so we don't have to worry about sort of selection into using the app uh, the, the company from which we obtain the data they do some pre-processing which is very useful for us our baseline sample is a pre-COVID sample in April 2019, and then we'll be doing some sort of experiments looking at the impact of the shift to remote working after the COVID pandemic. The sort of key objects from our point of view are um, what we refer to as a stay, uh, which is a measurement of no information of the device within 100 meters for a time of longer than uh, 50 minutes, so 50 minutes or longer. And that's going to kind of enable us to sort of track these trip chains, these distinct stays, these distinct places people visit within the city. And obviously that's conservative because, you know, there may also be some other stays we don't see, which are less than 50 minutes if I drop the children at school uh, for a short period of time. But, but it's going to provide high resolution, high temporal information on stays uh, of um, 50 minutes or longer duration. We measure people's homestay as their most frequent location where the device is found, um, measured by geographically contiguous stays. And their work location is the second most frequent location uh, that's more than 600 meters from home, which is a, is a good way of kind of recording a work location in April 2019 before the COVID-19 pandemic. And then we'll focus in our main results on, on the first and last days, uh, on user days where the first and last days of the day are at home, 
and that's enabling us to measure these trip chains when you leave home and return to home and we'll focus on users within the Tokyo uh, metro area. So that's just a brief example of the kind of resolution we have. Uh, these red squares are 25 meter by 25 meter squares and the darkness of the red shading is a sort of frequency of users. And as you can see, we can sort of map mobility within the city at a very fine level of resolution. These are sort of people uh, walking through a park towards a Meiji shrine in, in part of Tokyo. This is just some sort of descriptive data on how frequently uh, we observe these different kinds of stays, these different kinds of visits on, on smartphones. So here we've got for weekdays and weekends in gray, we've got the number of um, visits stays outside your home. So on average during the week, people visit 2.7 uh, other locations outside of the home. And then this uh, yellow bar is showing you what share of those or, or the number of those uh, that, in, that are part of a trip chain. So in other words, we find around 50% of these visits outside the home are actually occurring along trip chains where there's a potential for these consumption externalities. When you're traveling from home to work, you may stop off somewhere along the way, precisely because that's a convenient point to, to, to drop off at, given that you're traveling to work. So um, how do those consumption externalities matter? Well, we have two applications in the paper. The first um, application we look at are sort of uh, distinct place-based interventions, so our, or kind of events that affect the attractiveness of location. And this is showing you some results uh, from those here. And this is looking at the closure of large retail stores in Tokyo, uh, more than sort of 5,000 meters squared. Uh, we also look at the relocation of Tokyo's fish market from one part of the city to another as another example of this. And so what this is showing is uh, what economists refer to as an event study. So I'm sort of tracking the, the number of stays in a location. Um, it, it, and in the left panel, it's uh, within a 250 meter mesh where we observe one of these large uh, retail store closures. And then in the right panel, it's a contiguous 250 meter mesh. So it's not containing the store that closes, but it's uh, a 250 meter mesh square that's close to the store that closes. And so what's the punt lush line from these event studies? Well, as you might expect, immediately after a large retail store closure, we observe this drop, uh, highly statistically significant, substantial drop in foot traffic in the 250 meter grid square containing the retail store closure. And obviously closures are not random, but one of the reassuring things here is that the pre-trends are pretty flat before the store closes and we see this distinct drop in foot traffic. And then from our point of view, uh, the reason uh, that, you know, the, in our model of trip uh, travel itineraries and trip chains would sort of predict that it's not just the area where the store that closes, but it's also nearby locations that are along the way that are going to see a fall in foot traffic. As the store closes, uh, very few people are going to the place where the store closes, and that's going to depress foot traffic in surrounding areas, which will reduce the demand for local non-traded services there. And again, we see this very clear uh, discrete drop, statistically significant drop in foot traffic in neighboring areas, consistent with these sort of consumption externalities emphasized uh, by our model. And then another sort of application of those consumption externalities is to look at the collapse in foot traffic in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so here we have uh, visits to work, uh, to, to stays that are actually work locations on the left, and then the right we have stays that are non-work locations. Uh, the red figures are showing you means uh, for locations within the central business district, within two kilometers of the central point in Tokyo. And then the green line are visits to high density locations in the sort of top 10th percentile uh, proximity to the CBD. Uh, the blue uh, mid uh, density 50th to 90th percentile. And then the, the purple are low density, the bottom 50th percentile of, of, of distances from the central business district. The gray bars are sort of stay at home recommendations of the Japanese government. And what is the punchline? Well, unsurprisingly, uh, you know, you observe large drops in work stays, uh, in particular during these stay at home periods. And those drops are most intense in the densest parts of Tokyo, the central business district, and the parts of Tokyo close to the central business district. And that continues in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic, so it's continuing uh, up to the present day, consistent with the shift to working from home, and so many fewer people are commuting to work. And so that's maybe less surprising. What's more novel from the point of view of, of our model and, and this idea of consumption externalities is that as people in, say, tradable financial services stop traveling downtown in, in, with the shift to working from home, that doesn't just lead to a decline in work stays, it leads to a decline in non-work stays. In other words, there are fewer financial sector workers traveling to work, they're instead working remotely from home, 
But what is that doing? It's depressing the demand for local non-traded services, as we see in many US cities, uh, in New York and other cities, San Francisco, in the United States, there's this collapse in demand for coffee shops, non-traded services, uh, and uh, visits to other locations along the way to work, as predicted by our, our trip chaining model. And then what we do in the final part of our paper is develop a sort of formal model where agents decide where to live, where to work, and then conditional on living and working, they choose how many locations, how many other locations within the city to visit, and in what order to visit them. And that's a sort of very, very challenging problem to solve because you're picking the combinations of locations in which to visit and the order in which to go to them. And so we develop a method in the, in the paper to overcome that uh, challenge of just how dimensional the, the choice set is. And then in the paper, we sort of show that our model of, of um, trip chains is actually able to do quite a good job in capturing the collapse in foot traffic in the aftermath of the pandemic. So here we're splitting locations into tercels of distance from the central business district. Uh, the um, orange or pink uh, bar is the actual data. And so as you saw earlier, we see a dramatic collapse in foot traffic after the pandemic in the parts of the city closest to the central business district. And then in green, you see that our model with trip chains is able to capture that because as people stop going to work, as we saw, is depressing foot traffic and demand for local non-traded services. We then compare that with a more standard model of people commuting work to work that doesn't include trip chains, and that's in blue here, uh, where the assumption is that when you travel to consume services, you travel uh, from your home, from your home residence, that's the sort of conventional standard model in the literature, and you see that that's not capturing the collapse of foot traffic, and that makes a lot of sense because even before the pandemic you were traveling from home, so the fact that you're working from home doesn't really affect your demand to go downtown uh, for these other, uh, uh, other stays. And then we show, um, you know, that's not only true in the short term, but then we actually use the model to solve for the longer term implications of that. And we show that, um, as you might expect, there's a reallocation of economic activity as people start working from home. And so in the left here, you see that um, once we solve for the long run, generally equilibrium implications, we see an even bigger reallocation of activity. That's intuitive. As people are working from home, there are more non-traded services there nearby. That makes living in the suburbs more attractive rather than living downtown. And so you get this reinforcement effect in the long run. And you see here that you get long run adjustments in rents, collapses in rents in the center and rises in the suburbs, uh, consistent with current debates in the United States. So this is just meant to sort of illustrate all the sort of many fascinating things one can do with smartphone data. They help us measure these trip chains and highlight these consumption externalities, which help us, we think, better understand the impact of place-based interventions like transport infrastructure investments and this collapse in foot traffic in downtown areas in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I should stop there to, to stay on time. Thank you. Thank you very much.